Welcome to Just Go Make It. Um, today I'm going to be covering some of the mystery behind turning a regular car alternator into a motor. Um, for some reason this seems to be some mystical secret that some nobody really wants to explain for some reason. I don't know why. There's lots of videos of people showing them running. There's a website with a paywall if you want to pay for their book they'll show you how to do it um, but today I'm going to cover all the ins and outs of just how to do this um, it was something I worked for eh, quite a while to figure out how to do on my own picking up what clues here and there I could so I'm just going to cover it all and show you exactly how to do it um, the first thing you need to do with your alternator is to tear it apart uh, ignore these wires I've hooked them up first thing you do you'll take the back of it off and you remove the diodes out of it because an actual alternator when it's charging it's putting out AC power and the diodes turn that into DC um, I still have the regulator mounted to it just because it holds these two brushes which is actually the field coil um, it just holds the two brushes so I can connect wires to them and power the field coil. Uh, any alternator I've tore apart so far has four connections in here. You actually only need to worry about three of them, but you need to figure out which one because three of these connections is a coil and they all converge in on one connection, which is this one here. Um, a lot of times you pull it off, like I pull this rubber deal off and I can see all three wires running together there. So, what we'll do is um, I will draw a little diagram and show you exactly what's going on inside of here. I will explain these connections and the field coil a lot better. Alright, let's get to that. Okay, alternators can be thought of as basically just a three-phase motor. So what you have is you have each one of your phases come in here, and that is each one of these connections here that I figured out. So each one of them phases actually goes through a coil, and then they all connect together to another connection. That is the connection here that I'm not using, because I'm not worried about this connection of all three coils. I'm worried about these. So what we're, what I'm using for that, the power of this is uh, it's a standard RC airplane speed controller, which is basically a three phase speed controller. It takes DC, turns it into three phase, and controls the pulses to control the speed of the motor. Um, I believe this one here is a 40 or 60 amp. I really don't remember. Um, I'm going to be putting about 24 volts into it. Now another thing you have to consider is your field coil. So basically your field coil is just another coil and that's your magnetic connection. So like a regular RC airplane brushless motor because that's what we're turning this into is a brushless motor. So what inside of an airplane motor you have your magnets. Well this does not have any magnets in it. So this field coil is working as a electromagnet. So when you put power to it, you're magnetizing the stator inside of it, creating your magnets. So, let's work on getting this thing hooked up. Get that out of the way. What you need is your alternator. You need to figure out your three connections. Either take it apart if you cannot just like this one here, I can pull the rubber piece off and tell, or take it apart and figure out where all your wires, these connections are coming to. So this connection, which is all three of them coming together, you don't need to worry about it at all. So the first thing off is I'm gonna take my airplane speed controller. And what I've done is I've put these nice little bullet connectors on here so I can connect it up 
it doesn't matter which one goes to where for the time being. And whatever you want to do when you run this is make sure, like I'm having these connections here bare right now. Honestly, I need to put some tape on them because if they touch, they can cause some serious problems. My battery here, this is a six cell lithium. It's running around 24 volts. And another thing I'm needing is another small this is a brushed motor speed controller this is a real small one I think this is a like a four five six amp little speed controller and I have another battery for that this is a two cell lipo battery it's running at around seven volts or so a little over now to control these I'm using a receiver now you can get creative and control this Arduino based which is someday I would like to figure out so I'm using this receiver and I have my airplane radio which is my highly modified Turnergy 9x radio so let's hook this up now I know my throttle channel is throttle is channel 2 and I am connecting that to my speed controller my main one now my other speed controller here I am connecting up to mm, what did, let's see channel one that will work because the radio I can program it for anything so we've got our battery connection here for our six cell and our battery connection here for our two cell another thing I'm using is these jumper alligator clip leads. What I'm going to do to those is connect these to the two brushes for the field coil. It doesn't matter which side's positive and negative, it just it doesn't make no difference. So I can get these connected to the field coil like so. Then those will connect to my brushed speed controller like so. So let's get this turned around here. So let's see what's going on. And straighten some of this out some. So first thing I'm going to connect is my two cell to my brush to speed controller. Because that is actually powering my receiver and everything. So get my radio turned on. Let's check a couple settings in it real fast. Alright. So what I'm doing with this radio is I actually have the brush speed controller here on this knob. So if you see there's a light on here. I turn that knob what that's doing is applying a voltage to the, the field coil, creating our electromagnet in there. Now, next up, I'm going to do is I'm going to connect our six cell. Now, when you do this, make sure you don't have none of your connections are touching, and you will hear actually a faint beeping inside the motor, which is normal for these airplane speed controllers that's just letting you know that what size of battery it's running on and it just really totally depends on it so first thing off is I'm going to power on my field coil I'm going to turn that all the way up that's wide open now now if you watch I'm going to start giving it some throttle it's about half throttle there and this voltage to the field coil is actually very important. So see, I'm dropping the voltage. Oh, it quit. Do throttle back down. Yep. Sometimes this can be really picky doing it like this. It's full throttle. I'm backing the field coil voltage down. And there it goes. See, that's about where it's happy at. That voltage between the starting and when it's running to the field coil makes a big difference um, on the 
maximum RPM and just how it starts up. Uh, someday I'd like to build an Arduino controller that can control that voltage along with the speed to the motor. So see I can idle it down. I'll turn it up. Um, let's see, let's get some more voltage. It slows down. There's a point there where it runs at its highest RPM. There we go. It's that voltage is quite temper mental. I ain't quite figured out exactly, but I found that anywhere between uh, one volt to a volt and a half is enough. I've actually powered that field coil off with a double A battery. Um, let's shut this down. I've actually powered the field coil off of a double A battery just experimenting around and had it running. So that's all you have to do. Now these motors I have heard that you can run upwards of 300 volts into them and get a lot of power. I've heard everything from a couple of horsepower clear up to like five or six. Um, I have not hooked it up to anything to test it. Actually I would love to make like a an electric go-kart powered with two of these and running no oh, say 48 volts. Now another option Let's unhook our batteries here. Another option that I am wanting to try, instead of a speed controller, you can actually get mm, the speed controllers for like your electric scooters or your little electric go-karts that are for brushless motors. So they will have the three leads to the motor. They can be gotten fairly cheap, probably uh, 30 bucks or so for, mm, Somewhere one that probably handles 50, 60 amps, or actually I think that's probably about 30 amps that I found one. So I would love to try that someday to get one of those and try it. It's just a matter of powering the field coil that I think will be the true challenge. And I think having something microcontroller based such as the Arduino, to where it ties into your throttle, and uh, to control your field coil that way, I think would be probably one of the best ways or find a very happy voltage that's perfect in between for the starting and then the running. It seems like as I drop the voltage, the RPMs pick up. I think that has to do with something called um, the magnetic saturation of it, that the field coil reaches its maximum magnetic field that it can create. So more voltage, doesn't exactly mean more power. That's what I thought at first when I was trying to run around. I was putting 12 volts to the field coil and wondering why on earth would it not run? Because I thought maybe the stronger the magnetic field, the better it is, but it reaches a saturation point. And that's somewhere around, I'm gonna say the one and a half volt range. So really, turning an alternator into a motor, there's not much to them. It's actually quite simple. Um, you could do like I have here, a airplane speed controller. This is a brushless speed controller. You know them by the three leads. And a brushed one, which just has two leads. And uh, you control that with a radio. Um, there's Arduino sketches out there for controlling servos and stuff. You could do that with these. Uh, a servo tester, which is just a little box with a knob on it for testing out servos, technically you could use one of them. Really the sky's the limit on ideas that I've found for running one of these. So I would love to figure out a little better for controlling the voltage to the field coil and figuring out some other way for the throttle, either using a speed controller like this, but I'm afraid under a rather heavy load such as a go-kart or scooter or something it would pull quite a few amps for something like this. I saw a go-kart deal running two of these one time and I believe they was pulling no more than 30 amps so I think it just depends on your gearing and the alternator you use the load you're putting on it but pretty much 
That's simple. Why they don't explain. You know, when I first did this, the four connections blew me away. I could not figure it out using doing a resistance test. I could not figure out there's so little resistance on these coils that I could not find a difference in them. So I thought there's four coils. I did not understand it until I tore it apart and found that all three coils converge on this one connection, the one you don't need to worry about. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, ask, and I will get around to answering them. Or if there's any ideas for better ways to control one of these, I would sure really like to know. I would really love to run one of these motors on like two of these packs, which would be eh, 48 volts or so, but finding a 12 cell speed controller like one of these airplanes ones, they are very pricey. They are up there in the hundred and something dollar range, if not more. So I'm thinking the scooter speed controller for the brushless motors will be the way to go and try to get one of these running. So someday down the road, no idea when, I will get one of the speed controllers and go from there because I have another alternator that's a smaller one that is built basically the same as this. I mean, every alternator I've tore apart so far has the four connections back here that connected to the diodes. So you just need to figure out which one of the connections they all converge on and go from there. But it's pretty easy, I think. Why everybody keeps it such a secret, it seems like to me, on turning an alternator into a motor. It is very simple. It takes half an hour, if that, if you understand what you're doing with all these. It does not take very long to just make to tear it apart. Pull the diodes off, make the connections to the field coil, figure out which of these three connections you use, and you will have it running. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some good information on it. Experiment. If you have any questions, any ideas, let me know. Alright, well thanks, and I hope you like this video. Subscribe to my Just Make It channel, and there should be many more projects, maybe something to do with this. I actually have a Power Wheels four-wheeler. I would love to power with something like this, just for the fun of it. All right, well, thanks for watching. See you later.